is loved and wanted by his father. He was never outside of his father's love, not even for a moment, even when he was in that far country. This is the message of the gospel. As any who would turn to Jesus Christ, When any turns to Christ, that is, dies to the useless way of life, and come to see our Father for who He is in Christ, we have that moment, we have that moment where our thinking changes. And you see, what is being focused on here isn't the sins of the Son, but His disbelief, His distorted view of who His Father is and what His Father wanted. He goes through that moment of metanoia, the change of thinking about his father. You see, he thought his father needed some sort of prepared script. But you see, when the son himself recognized the state he was in, he entered into what we see in 1 John when it says that if we say we have no sin, you see, the son realized the state he was in. And he knew the answer was to return home. He had a change of thinking. He begins to see his father for who he really is at that moment of embrace. He sees him for who he is. But you see, it wasn't the father that kept his son away. It was his son's choice. You see, all humanity has a distorted view of God. They have a very distorted view of God. They need a right view of the great God who is our father. In Colossians 1 verse 2, Colossians 1, verse 2, Paul addresses the problem between humanity and God and where the real problem lies. In Colossians 1, 2, or 1, verse 21, excuse me, Paul writes, once, and this is speaking of people who were formerly in that far country, that far country of a distorted view of God or disbelief of God, Paul writes, once you were alienated from God, and were hostile in your minds. You see, the hostility, the distorted view isn't in the mind of God towards humanity, it's humanity's view of God. What keeps humanity and God apart isn't God. It's humanity. Humanity has a very distorted view of God and how they should approach Him. You see, humanity, we're all so much like that son. We think our, we think our father needs to hear something, needs a pre-planned, crafted script. You see, that's how humanity thinks God is to be approached, through religiosity, through religion. You see, that's what the son was literally doing. He was creating a religion to approach his father. But you see, God doesn't want religion. He wants a relationship with us. You see, as that son, when he approached his father, his father ran to meet him. This is the same father who had himself declared legally dead that his son might have his inheritance. He runs to meet his son and he pays no attention to his rehearsed script. He merely embraces it. That shows us what God wants for all humanity. And what keeps humanity at a distance, what keeps humanity in that far country is humanity's hostility towards God. God would welcome in any and all home into the household if they would just but come. If they would just but receive it. Offered freely to any. The father took no notice of his son's religious script. That is, we don't approach God through religiosity, through prepared scripts, whether it be liturgies or sacraments, whatever it might be. God wants us, not religion. What keeps humanity from experiencing all that God has for them is not God's unwillingness to receive us home, but our unwillingness to come home. This distorted view that keeps us in the far country. Through the gospel, through the gospel, our Father issues to each and any an eternal offer to have a place in His household. When we believe that message, we enter into the sonship that is ours all along anyway, that God has always offered to us, all through Jesus Christ. You see, 
When we're in disbelief of who God is, our life amounts to feeding swine. If our life isn't about Jesus Christ, our lives amount to feeding swine. You see, that's what being in that far country is. It's literally a waste of resources, the spending of our efforts, and amounts to feeding swine. But God would offer us an eternal place in His household if we will just but receive it. It's made available to us all through Jesus Christ. And Jesus offers and shares everything that is His with us except His deity. For you, for me, for any and all who will believe it. We can see that the elder son in the parable had a little bit of a problem with it. That would be like those of us that have been Christians for many years. Having a little bit of resentment towards those who may stroll back into the fellowship one day within in our experience. Yet, God tells us those things are always ours. We live in a world of prodigals. We live in a world of prodigals whose views of God are distorted. And yet deep within them there is that hostility that keeps them away. An unnecessary estrangement that is enacted on the parts of each and every one of us. Upon our view of God, not God's view of us. You know, God is so much like the Father in the parable who had himself declared legally dead that the inheritance might be given to his children. You see, the great creator God, the great God has had himself declared legally dead in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, for you and for me. We can see in John chapter 3, verse 16, God's desire for the world, for God so loved the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should live and not perish. We can also see in John 14 verses 9 and 11 that when we look upon Jesus we are seeing the Father. Where he says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. You see, in Jesus we see that Father who is willing to have himself declared legally dead for each and every one of us. For you, for me. For those who don't even yet realize it, for those that still squander their lives in the far country. You see, God has put within all humanity this need for something greater, this desire for something above and beyond their existence. He has put eternity in our hearts. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, it says, He, speaking of God, has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in their hearts. You see, we have a need to return home, to be again in our Father's household. But you see, that need for, that we all are made with, created with, that longing that lays submerged within all of us, that longing needs to be spoken to. They need to hear the message of the gospel. Some, unfortunately, ignore this desire for the Father. Many don't recognize it, nor do they understand it. But the Christian message is about the love that the Father reveals to each and every one of us, to any and all, through Jesus Christ, that He loves us and that He wants us, and that our weaknesses and limitations are judged through the eyes of gracious love. God knows exactly what we are. He knows us in our limitations, our brokenness, our weaknesses. He knows that many of us have spent our time feeding swine. But He loves us nonetheless unconditionally and welcomes us home. And He demonstrates His want for each and every one of us in the person of His Son, Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19, this is what Paul was speaking of. This is a very highly theological verse in the scriptures. Yet it speaks to us about the love of our Father. A Father who is so willing to have us as His children that He would have Himself declared legally dead so that we might share in that inheritance. 2 Corinthians 5, 19, we read, For God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. 
and he has committed to us that word of reconciliation. Now, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As through Christ, or rather, as through God, did, through us, did God beseech you. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be reconciled to God. That is, that in Jesus Christ, God was having himself declared legally dead. That we might be reconciled, that we might share in that inheritance, that sonship that he has always desired us to have, that he welcomes us to be a part of, that he would run and meet us and dress us in that robe and put the shoes on our feet and the ring on our finger. Our status of sonship is not called to question except in our own hearts and minds. God loves us and he wants us. The message of the church is to tell others about the love of the Father. A Father that loves them more than they can ever imagine. A Father who loves them more than he loves his own self and demonstrated his love for us by dying in the person of Jesus. And we might share in that inheritance. If they could only realize that that God, that Father, is waiting for them to come home. He watches for them daily. The Father doesn't want a scripted, pre-planned confession, but a change of heart that results when we see Him for who He is. When we realize that He is a loving Father that loves us without condition, without limits. A God who wants each and every one of us to come home. They, if they could just see the love that He has for them and realize that they are welcomed home, within the Father's love, if they will but freely receive it. Please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that your love is so boundless towards us, that your grace is endless, that you have given all things, of, all things to us except deity. That God, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, God, and we pray that our view of you would never be obscure, obstructed, or encumbered by any inaccurate perceptions of you, but that you are a God who loves us, wants us, and includes us. Father, we thank you, and we praise you, in Jesus' name.